When I make rum raisin, I only get four and a half out of it. Okay. Why is that? I don't know. How? They're heavy as hell, too. Uh huh. Right? We made rum raisin, we got four and a half. <laughs> oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> two gallons? This guy must be nuts. <laughs> I sell two different types of things. I sell a, adult ice cream, and I sell regular ice cream. In the regular ice cream, the biggest selling flavor is chocolate velvet and vanilla chip. Well, all, they're all, I don't know, the vanilla caramel praline and butter pecan are real big too. We sell those out every week, those two, every week. Um, and then you adult, you with alcohol Yeah, the adult side, uh, Kahlua Fudge and uh, Mystic Slide and Bailey's. Those are the three. Hey, what is this, an interrogation here? <laughs> Man, you started. Whoa, look at the time. Um, what are you going to do, taste that? Yeah. Really? I want to see what it tastes like. It's delicious. It's, it's key lime pie. How good is that? Oh, I could just eat the whole can. Right, of course. Just chill it down. That's it. Put me so on a beach, I'm good to go. All you do is you take this, add it to the mix, throw some sugar in. Oh, I do add a little key lime juice. Okay. Look at this, Paula. Jeff's going to make key lime ice cream. Two cans of Duncan Hines key lime cream. Uh, some key, key lime, lime juice, juice Italiante, 80% full. And sugar. How much sugar? How much what? How much sugar? Uh, 36 ounces, I think, but I only need half because we're making a half batch. Okay. So 24. I need... Uh, 24 ounces. Uh, no, no, 18. Uh, 18. Okay. 18 ounces of sugar. They'll be here shortly with Okay. It. Did Aaron go out? Paula? Okay, thanks. While we're ounces. waiting for some sugar to arrive... For Jeff's oh, next flavor. Any questions that we can tell you about? Answer for you? Nothing? Yes, this gentleman wants... By the way, I think that leaks. Not severely, but uh, it leaks. It will be severe soon. Well, it must be something you're doing wrong. No, it came that way. <laughs> you, uh, who had a question? This gentleman had a question. Go ahead, ask me a question. Yeah, uh, uh, operational costs. How operational costs. Those, those machines. Should I buy I would buy one of these, um, but in the 24 quart version, not the 12, because as we mentioned before, this makes six quarts, half a tub. That makes a full tub, and the next size up, same physical machine, deeper barrel, for only two thousand dollars more, makes not one tub but two tubs. But that, so, that's the acquisition cost. So, so in running this. Eighty-two cents every twelve minutes. <laughs> In other words, we don't know. It depends on your electric cost. But if you can run a machine that makes four times as much as this in the same amount of time, obviously your electricity is going to be a so lot lower. You'll be so busy counting money and going to the bank to deposit it, you won't have time to worry about that. The biggest question, the biggest answer I get on that is. You know, people say, can I make a half batch uh, or uh, how long can I store it? The simple question is, if I make bubble gum licorice ice cream and it sits for six months in that freezer cabinet, what does that tell you? Is, is the question, is the question, uh, is it good after six months or is that such a lousy flavor that nobody wants to buy it? If you're not going through your flavors at a fast rate, relook at your flavors. I make coffee banana. I love coffee banana. Everybody else in the world hates coffee banana because the coffee's fighting with the banana for world dominance. So I make it on purpose because all six gallons are mine. <laughs> but I couldn't sell it to save my life. So um, if you go into business thinking, okay, this is what I need and this is what I'm, what I'm going to be in business, I can understand that, uh, that you buy this machine to get going and you work with a chest freezer when I know later on you're going to need uh, different uh, upgraded equipment or uh, more equipment because you've got to get into business what you can afford. Um, 
And, and I got to tell you about an email I just got a second ago. Um, so you're going to need the 24 quart sometime. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the money for it, don't spend it because you're no good to yourself if you go into business broke. Uh, you, if you don't have $8,000 cash in the bank to meet your bills, because no one's going to give you open account at the start. And whatever you're expecting to happen, uh, it's going to be something different. Uh, one of you, the rationales was, okay, when you get the machine, and we just decided we were excited, we're going to be experimenting a lot. And experimenting takes, takes for a long time, of course. But you need to do it so you can decide which flavors you have. See, I don't agree with your basic no. premise uh, at all. I do not agree with this idea of, well, we're going to do a lot of experimenting. experimenting. You know, it's really pretty simple. First off, what, what flavors are we going to sell? Well, let's look at the national average. The number one flavor is vanilla. The number two flavor is actually salted caramel. Uh, number three is chocolate. Four is strawberry. There's four of your flavors right there that you know you're going to make. I can't imagine not selling Oreo cookie or cookie monster. Uh, Oreo cookie is just Oreo cookies. Cookie monster is a bag of chocolate, uh, a bag of Oreo cookies, a bag of chocolate chip cookies, some Hershey syrup, and some chocolate chips. Kids love it. So now we've got five flavors uh, already set, and we haven't even made one thing. Uh, then we go to Jeff's book, and we look at and see uh, whatever he says is the most popular at his store and we uh, value his opinion. So we're gonna pick up two or three more right there. So we're probably up to eight flavors now and we've never even made anything. Uh, and then uh, the rest, we can look at our market and say, okay, this is a very foo-foo market, uh, Westchester County, New York, where I'm from, and everybody's just totally full of themselves. They're all bankers and everything else. And so we're gonna make um, uh, avocado ice cream. You couldn't sell avocado ice cream in Brooksville except to my wife to save your life. I went a full year on six flavors. Yeah. Six flavors. I went a year. And, uh, and that was pretty good. That was seeing from zero customers up to about 120 customers a night on six flavors. We still sell those six flavors. They're right in that book. Same six flavors. So don't plan on spending months and months uh, experimenting on flavors because it's not necessary. And then when you do want to, exp so don't buy equipment based on what you want to experiment on. Uh, then there comes down to actually making the flavor. If you said to me, Steve, in order for you to survive the day, you must make a uh, vanilla birthday cake. I've never made a birthday cake in my life, but I'm going to go pick up The Joy of Cooking or Betty Crocker's book, and it's going to say, mathematically, you need this amount of flour, sugar, and water for it to be a birthday cake. And then we recommend you use this many ounces of vanilla. I like it stronger, like Jeff, so I'm gonna add more vanilla. So now I've got my starting point, and then I put it all together, and boom, I got a birthday cake. Or I've got key lime pie ice cream. And then on the second batch, you say, you know, it was pretty good, like we said this morning on the mint chip. That was a great example. The next time we make mint chip, we're gonna know to at least take the flavor up by a third or more because it wasn't strong enough. The color was nice, that's fine, we'll leave that alone. The mix level was good, but the flavor wasn't there. So we're gonna add some more flavor or maybe we're gonna look for an alternative. Uh, Jeff uses creme de menthe, which would be pretty cool. Um, so in the second, we know what the first batch tasted like. The second batch, we can adjust it. And then by the third batch, it's fine tuned and now it's in our repertoire. That didn't even take two hours. So you don't want to spend, I got an email, I, I just feel so bad for this lady, I just got an email a couple minutes ago, and she's telling me how she's got phase one and phase two of getting into business. And phase one is to experiment with her flavors, and then phase two will be to go find a store. Well, in phase one, she went out and bought a uh, $2,000 tank, 30 gallon tank, because she thinks she's gonna pasteurize her mix. But she didn't know she needed a motor, and she needs temperature controls. She needs all sorts of things. That's the first problem. Then the person who sold her the tank said, um, uh, I know where you can get a, a Chinese batch freezer that's uh, 20 <laughs> liters for $800. And so she bought it. And it arrived, and it's not 20 liters, it's 2 liters. And it doesn't run because it's on 50 hertz, not 60 hertz. It'll run in China, not here. So she's just lost 800 bucks. And her question to me is, do you know where I can get a cheap Emory Thompson? 
And I wrote her back and I said, you, you might as well just tear this email up now because you're going to hate me. I mean, you're going to hate me with a passion. Please don't write back with all sorts of foul words. I'm too used to it. I say them myself. And what I wrote her was, you are not ready to get into business. If you bought an $800 Chinese machine and you can't even move from that standpoint because you don't have any more money, you're not ready to go into business because you don't even have the money to go buy that can of uh, flavor or that bag of sugar. You're stuck. And the best thing I can offer you is not a cheap Emory Thompson, which doesn't exist, or, and there's no cheap Capigiani and no cheap Taylor. The best I can offer you is save your money. Go do something else and save your money. Keep your dream and you'll reach it, but you've got to get more money in the bank before you even open. Uh, Jeff has brought down the cost of getting into business dramatically in my mind, and I, I work on that premise. We, we get you going and you make a lot of money on this, and then you go into the larger machines later. But if you start with almost no money, you have no chance of getting into business. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have something. It's like saying, I'm gonna start a moving company, but all I have is a bicycle, <laughs> you know? You, you can take some small jobs. But anyway, I, so I wouldn't buy two. I would buy one because that's what's affordable. And I know darn well, because it's human nature, you're gonna want a second store. And um, people say, well, I'm gonna buy, it happens very rarely, nobody gives up an Emory Thompson, ever. But they buy this, and I know that every time I sell one of these, I have automatically just sold one of those. So I'm set for the next 40 years. I'm, I'm golden for 40 years. But uh, they call up and they say, uh, I'm going to buy the 24 quart and I'm going to sell off my 6 quart. And I said, let me tell you, the day you put this on eBay, it'll sell in an hour and a half, and it'll sell for a thousand less you bought it for, even though you've had it for three years. But the day you sell that is the day your best friend walks into the store and says, I just found a location 20 miles away. It's only 500 square feet. It's absolutely perfect for a small store. Let's move the little guy up there so we don't have to ship ice cream. And then we'll put the, the bigger Emory Thompson at the mother store. And that, that happens almost every time because it's human nature, it's ego. We want to open that second store. Except for Jeff. And Jeff has gone from... 300 square feet to, I think, about 37,000 square feet uh, with his own uh, gym and health club and swimming pool. And he, he, just, he just keeps adding on to the place. I said, so how are you doing in that 300 square feet? Oh, you mean the 37,000 square feet? Isn't that right? With a little Actually, bit of exaggeration? I went, I went from, I started uh, in a room that was nine feet by seven feet. Uh, <laughs> so 63, I, 630 square feet. No, how much? Nine sevens is 63, 630 square feet. That's pretty small. 630 square feet? Huh? Nine times seven? Nine sevens is 63. Or is that 63 square feet? 63 uh, square feet. And yeah, that's a, not even a that's And it not was even the a back room of a gym. You had to walk through a gym, a smelly, sweaty, noisy gym to get to my room in the back. My sink was a nine-inch sink. You saw it. My sink was a nine-inch sink. And that's where I started in business. And then I kept expanding till I knocked the gym out. And now we have 3,800 square feet. That's a, that's a mansion, to put it in perspective. 3,800 square feet is a big mansion of a house. Yes. Well, Yeah, there is, because it'll, uh, the question is, can you make four quarts in a 24 quart? No, you can't, because you're, you've got so much refrigeration, it's going to freeze to the wall. You can make a half batch. Uh, I have to say, the 24 quart machine is a 20 quart if you're making ice cream, because that's the way the mix comes. And it's 24 quarts if you're making Italian ice, because we're mixing it at the sink and we're just using tap water, so we can go for the capacity of the machine. Like Jeff pointed out earlier, I base, he bases his finished capacity on the way the mix comes. So for today, he divided the bag in half. Normally, he just puts a whole bag in. You can only make a half batch. So if a half batch, minimum, if a regular batch is 20 quarts, you can make a 10 quart batch finished. Uh, so that's five quarts of mix in. You can't go lower than that or it all freezes to the walls. You're up. Your what? sugar's here. I'm ready to make ice cream? All right, yeah. Okay. Look at this rain. 
I'm going to build an ark. We need uh, nothing. <laughs> of course, if I build an ark, it'll be all stainless steel and it'll sink because of its own weight. So we need, this is going to be a half batch. Uh, why is it a half batch? Let's see if you're paying any attention. Why do I use a half batch now? Who said that? Okay. You can have the book for it. <laughs> because this, this is a 12-quart, uh, a and mine is a 24. My recipes are based on 24, which would be a full bag. So we're going to use a half bag. Uh, what's left in here? What did you take out of this? We don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, Jeff keeps his uh, recipes very close to the vest, which is a way of saying he's not going to tell you. Um, however, I think I uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention it. He has a book called uh, Mystic Ice Cream Original Recipes that he sells. If you're watching this and you're interested, these are great recipes. Uh, every one of them is perfect. Um, you can get this from Jeff. His address is x is is uh, x hippie at aol.com. But you got to watch the spelling because you know he's you know from Here the sixties. You know, back go. in the sixties, the they all did acid and all sorts of stuff. So the spelling went out the window. Sixties and fifties. Uh, so uh, the spelling is x h i p p e e x. The letter X, H-I-P-P-E-E, -E, at AOL. Can you believe it? He's on AOL. The last person, last person on earth. You're on AOL? It's time to move. Um, so I recommend that highly. It's, it's really good. And one thing about me, just so you know, because I've been recommending today companies for dipping cabinets, companies for a flavor, company for this. Both Jeff and I have uh, the same attitude towards recommending things. We do it because we want you to succeed and we want you to have the best Neither one of us takes a dime from any company. We don't need to, but we especially don't take it because you can't be an honest broker of information if you're going to be taking a, a kickback here and a kickback there. Uh, here, a kickback there, a kickback there. Uh, we're not going to do it. Uh, so uh, when we tell you someone, it's going to be a, an honest reason that it's the best you can get. This is and, all wet. Does it matter? Well, try it. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> sugar, sugar, sugar. What happened to the sugar? Right here. Oh, and oh, and should I throw in for every book you buy, you can have a selfie with Sammy, uh, my golden retriever. She'll stand next to it. <laughs> but we're not here to sell books. Well, well, maybe you are. <laughs> So we need uh, how much sugar? If you, uh, some of you got the book already. This is in the book, the key lime ice cream. For the other people, oh well. <laughs> uh, sugar, we need how many ounces? <laughs> I'll just measure out how many ounces right now. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, you need 18 ounces of sugar. <coughs> they're not writing anyway. <laughs> well, they're all going to buy your book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is not... This, we need pounds. Where's the other deal here? Oh, uh, you keep pushing tear, or um, it, it will switch. Uh, units. Sorry, over here, units. I need 18 ounces. There, that's ounces, right? No, that's kilograms. I can't see. <laughs> Neither can I. That's pounds, so that's going to give you pounds and ounces. Pounds, so, okay. ounces. So I need 18 ounces. You got one pound, two that's ounces. That's too much, right? Yes. Okay. All right, that's good enough. Any questions? Okay, uh, I guess this would, um, have you watched the videos where we use the, uh, where we use the, uh, it's the teacher in me, uh, the, the paint thinner, the, uh, the, 
what, the paint thinning tool, right? Yeah. That we're not supposed to talk about. But that's what I would normally use here uh, to mix this and these. What Jeff's t talking about is he <laughs> took a Black & Decker drill and went to the paint store and bought a stirring rod and attached the two together, and that's his, you know, $400 uh, blender uh, for $49.95. Does it work? You bet. And it was $3.82 for that. This thing cost me a little bit more. <laughs> I bought that. I still haven't used it yet. I bought the whole kit like you have. Yes. Haven't used it yet. Oh. Okay. So we'll add a couple cans of this key lime pie stuff. What was that? <laughs> uh. Now this is Duncan Hines key lime, original key lime cream. That's pretty easy. And it's delicious right out of the can. <laughs> all right. Um, also, what I found in creating all these recipes is that a little Key West lime juice works good. So I'm going to add some Key West lime juice. We'll add one ounces. <laughs> Let me see. It calls for one ounces. Is that an, is that a Talenti? Container filled up 80% of the way? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we're not adding all of it. Oh, you're getting tricky. Uh, ounces, got it. Let's go to... There we go. 12 ounces. We don't have to add this to this. And now we'll... Uh, We'll stir it up, or as they say in the song, steer it up, right? Yeah. Steer it up. I never got that. Why isn't it? It's spelled stir, S-T-I-R. <laughs> Can you put this part in there? Because the thing doesn't reach the bottom. Uh, I can get it's you called an, an immersion blender, yeah, I can so get let's you an immerse extension. <laughs> If he goes zap and the lights go out, we'll know you can't do it. <laughs> now, if you wanted to, could you add a brick of that Philly cream cheese to this? Yes. Damn right. Sure. Sure. That's the fun part that we were talking about. And I, I will, when I go back to the store and I make this again, I'm going to add some Philly cream cheese to it. I wasn't sweetly satisfied enough last time. What was in here before? The vanilla. We're okay. The vanilla. You're good to go. All right. Oh, boy. That's a lot of stuff here. Does anybody own a uh, brightly colored Volkswagen Beetle oh, because it just went on. floating by? <laughs> it's floating away? <laughs> it went that away. It's heading to the ocean. <laughs> All right, we'll add the 12 ounces of lime juice. Fire it up. And should we put it on or mix it a little? Put it on. Put it on. The machine will mix it for you. Right. The machine will mix just, it for you. Just like the sugar, it would mix yeah, it. Yeah, just like the sugar. <laughs> Ain't we got fun? Yes. <laughs> All right. That's it. What could we add to this? Nilla wafers. Yeah, what else? Chocolate chips? Um, what do you use for chocolate chips? I use chocolate chips. I mean, but do they come out hard? I find they work best. <laughs> do they come out hard? <laughs> what do I use for chocolate chips? Well, they chips? make special ones that are uh, more on the soft side, like flakes. No, I don't use flakes. I use Hershey's, large and small, and now 
Hershey's Special Dark. Oh, it's it's maybe 10% more money, but oh boy. It's the Special Dark, you know about that stuff? Wow, Hershey's Special Dark. We, we buy the fudge and the chips now they make in Special Dark. But I use chips and okay. I dump them right in. So do you. Yeah, but uh, someone was telling me about uh, uh, chocolate chip flakes that you could buy, and I just wondered, yeah. do you have a when problem you're with them being ice too cream, hard? When you're eating ice cream with flakes in it, you're never quite satisfied that you're getting enough chocolate, mm -hmm. right? You want more chocolate. There's no such thing as too much chocolate. So now some ice creams, I must use the small chips, and some I have to use the big chips. Mm. Go figure. What determines? Me. That's ah. you just uh, that's what I mint chocolate chip, gotta have the small ones. I want chips in every bite. Mm -hmm. The other ones, the big chips, ooh look, there's a chip, you know. But mint chip, every bite. Okay. Good to know. So what else could you put in here? If you wanted to have Dust. fun one rainy day, what? Dust. Lime zest? Lime zest? Sure, you could put lime zest in there. Um, could you put strawberries in there? Yeah, absolutely. There's no end to what you can do. That's why you have to limit yourself on the flavors. I could, I could have 100 flavors up on my board, and I have to limit it to 40. You know, it's too much fun. This is too much fun. Do you know of any place that sells key lime, straw, strawberry key lime ice cream? No, but you could. And then people walk out saying, oh man, strawberry key lime, that's outrageous. So, you know, it's uh, the world is your oyster. <laughs> Something like that. But you can add anything. You just got to learn, and, and it's common sense not to contrast things. And you certainly don't want to put something in that will fight the flavor that you're working with. Oh, hold down the questions. Cookie butter in it. Hmm? Cookie butter. Cookie butter. Shh. Shh. That's the best. Yesterday, we decided what to make as a flavor that nobody's made before. So the class came up with s'mores. They came up with two. One was tiramisu, tiramisu. and one was s'mores. Tiramisu, we were sitting at lunch yesterday, so all we had was the afternoon left of the class. The class is two days. So all we had was the, the afternoon, and we thought, can we get mascarpone cheese, which is what tiramisu is, at Publix? And we said, nah, that ain't gonna happen. Not the amount we wanted and the type we, so we decided to go with s'mores. S'mores, three things, graham cracker, chocolate, and marshmallow and then you melt it over the campfire or whatever, or you're in a hurry, you just need it right away. So, genius over there in the corner, we, I said, all right, let's go to Publix, and then I said, oh, how much graham crackers we gonna need? You need a lot of graham crackers, because that's a, a key ingredient in it, in the flavor. So, how much? And what do we get? So we decided, he said, how about cookie butter? You know what cookie butter is? You know what peanut butter is? Just do this, okay. Peanut butter is in the jars and they make that, Trader Joe's came up with this. It's called Speculus and Trader Joe's invented it. You know the market Trader Joe's, the high-end market. They invented Speculus. It is now, and it comes in a jar and instead of taste, it looks just like peanut butter, but instead of tasting it, the taste you get is graham crackers. It's, or biscotti, same thing. It is now, I just read online, it's Trader Joe's number one selling item in the whole store, Speculus. So uh, Tim volunteered to take Mandy and go to Publix, and they said, how much should we get? I said, buy every jar they got of cookie butter, and then we needed, and then we had the, um, the chocolate I had at the store, and now we needed um, marshmallow. 
So marshmallow fluff in the jars, vile stuff. But I said, buy all they got. So we get back to the store, and we had, here I go again with stories. It's, it's, see, you created this story. So we lined up all the stuff, and then we have to figure out how to make a recipe. You don't want to make a recipe in the beginning by using your machine as the test of a recipe. You want to be able to make it on your counter in a small quantity, taste it, know that it's right, then multiply, do your math, and know what you've got to put in the machine. And that's what we did. Uh, and it worked flawlessly, didn't it? I mean, flawlessly. Uh, we decided that we needed five jars, 14.1 ounce jars of cookie butter, three, oh, we weren't, we weren't just gonna throw it all in the machine. We were gonna make a variegat of the marshmallow. You know what a variegat is? It's the swirls that you see in the ice cream. Very cool. I'm good at that. So we decided, <laughs> it came out perfect. So we decided to make a variegate of marshmallow fluff in the cookie butter ice cream. So we put the cookie butter ice cream uh, mix in the, uh, in the batch freezer. And then we took the fluff and poured it in a flexible container. And it was so thick that we had to thin it out. And which one of you suggested the mix? One of you, you did. He said, thin it out with some mix. Took some vanilla mix, the white mix. We thinned it out with a whisk or, oh no, the drill bit. <laughs> we used the drill bit. We used the paint thinner. Right, we used the paint thinner and boy, that gave the paint thinner a workout, didn't it? That was, that was a long time coming. But we got it to the consistency of, uh, what? Jelly. jelly. Yeah, consistency of jelly. So that when we extracted the... Uh... Hang on. We got work to do. So that when we got the, uh, where were we? Right, so we put all the ice cream in a big bucket like this. And we brought it over to the counter. That's the graham cracker ice cream. And then we took the bucket with the marshmallow fluff mixture in it that was nice and jelly-like, poured it on the top, took a big spatula and turned it a few times, squeezed the tub and poured it into our buckets and we got oh, gorgeous that was beautiful and that we made that yesterday afternoon and today we'll sell it tonight I think it's gonna go like that oh boy you want to eat some ice cream don't you <laughs> well I guess we're ready to roll how do you know when it's ready when it holds a peak in here. In other words, it comes down, and right now it's holding the peak. It's not going into the mixture. So I know it's ready. Now, I sh now interestingly enough, some of the people that I taught, because there's a special uh, Facebook site where they all talk, all the hundreds of people who've gone through my class, and one of them, this is crazy, said, oh, I hope she's not watching. She said, how long do you fluff your ice cream? <laughs> Took me a minute to understand what she meant. This is what she meant. We're fluffing it now. And I'm not going to fluff it, but she fluffs it so that she gets another 10, 15, maybe 20% volume out of it. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Just do it now. Look at that. That's key lime ice cream. Oh, baby. You don't want any. Uh, I'm at a disadvantage here. What? 
thinking I'd help you set up the table. Oh, thanks. Uh, oh. Cut bowls we need. That's oh, all. Here. Bowls we got. We got bowls. Yeah. How is it? I don't know. I didn't taste it. Oh. It's the first one I didn't taste. Okay. It looks nice. Okay. It's white. Okay, should we try it? I guess we should try it. Let's, I'll try it first. I'll let you know. Wait, I'll let you know whether to come up or not. I'll try a second. Oh, boy, you can come up. <laughs> How outstanding no, no, don't, is that? No, don't come up. Don't come up. We're saving is it all for me. We're keeping it all for me. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's really good. You asked what you could put in that? And uh, the lady here said um, the cookies, the Nilla wafers. Nilla wafers, yeah. I think some kind of crunch in there would be good. Well, then that's what you make. Yes. I'll keep it like this. Okay. <laughs> it's good. Well, I better go get my third and final formula. Mr. Speculus. Did you get poured Look on? at the texture of this stuff. Unbelievable, isn't it? These machines make such smooth ice cream. That's why I don't think you need gelato, who's ever the gelato people there. I don't think you need gelato. Gelato, you're limiting your market. And you couldn't tell the difference? No, not at all. Make your gelato flavors, but make them in ice cream. Here you go, my man. Good. <laughs> yeah, take a little. He's been waiting a long time for yeah. this. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Appreciate it. And you can Thank come you. back for seconds. And thirds and fourths and fifths. Jeff, what's your biggest fail? My biggest fail? Slambuka. I made ice cream out of Sambuca. And uh, that was my biggest failure. Everybody, by the way, this is Giselle. If I didn't, uh, did I mention before that you were here? Yes. Oh, no. Giselle is uh, uh, new to Emory Thompson. She's going to head up our international desk. So if you're in Mozambique and want to speak to someone from Emory Thompson, you'll be speaking to Giselle.